Hello Year 3, I hope you're all doing well and keeping safe and I hope you've been enjoying the work that I've set for this week for English. If you don't recognise me by my emoji on the PowerPoint, my name is Miss Bay and I've been helping out in Year 3 for the past few weeks. Um, I'm very excited to meet you all. It's been quite sad not being able to meet you all the past few weeks, but I've had a really nice time getting to know the current Year 3s who've been in school and I can't wait to meet all the rest of you. So to celebrate, um, I'm going to read you a little section of the Pugs of the Frozen North bit. We're on chapter six now and I know you've all really been enjoying this book. So I'm going to read you a few pages just so you get to know my face, okay? The town of Snowdovia was built in the same style as the Po of Ice on stilted platforms along a fjord edge. But unlike the Po of Ice, it was full of life and bustle. People lined the balconies outside of their homes to watch as the adventurers who meant to race to the top of the world came sledding into their fjord. From all over the north they came. True winter had not arrived completely without warning. Not for people who knew what to look for. Not for people who had been eagerly waiting for the first flake of magical snow to fall. They had been preparing for weeks and now that the ice had come, they were ready. At Limpetville Institute of Technology, Professor Shackleton Jones had known about the upcoming winter by the excited way the northern lights made his particle detectors ping. He was determined to reach the top of the world using the power of science. He and his robot companion, Snowbot, swept into Snowdovia on a carbon fibre sled so strong and so lightweight that it was barely there at all. On a lonely island not far from Snowdovia, Helga Hammerfest had learned of the big freeze by watching the flight of geese and the way the spiders spun their cobwebs. She had readied her sled and harnessed up her team. No dogs for Helga, just her two pet polar bears, Snowdrop and Slush Puppy. She was the local favourite so she got an extra big cheer when her snow bears came lumbering up to the starting line. Sir Basil Sprout Dumpling heard of the freeze from his butler, Sideplate, who had been keeping watch on the weather forecasts. Ten minutes later, they were at the airport, loading Sir Basil's sled and pedigree dog team aboard an aeroplane. Sir Basil's father had been the first to reach the top of the world last time True Winter came. He had met the snow father and had his wish granted which was to be ridiculously rich. He had gone back to England with a fortune in rubies, sapphires and diamonds, but Sir Basil had spent it all. If we don't beat these riffraff to the pole side plate, he said as he drew up to the starting line, I shall have to sell the old stately home. I mean to win this race, even if I have to cheat like an absolute bounder. Right, so what do we think is going to happen next? I'm really enjoying this story so far, year three, and I'm sure all of the rest of you are. I'm very much looking forward to meeting you all on the 8th of March and I'm sure you're all really looking forward to meeting another wonderful dog, uh, Ted. He's so sweet so I'm sure you're all going to really enjoy meeting him and hopefully enjoy meeting me too. Thank you for listening to me read Pugs of the Frozen North and I'll see you soon. Bye!